James here from the Gator Nation Football Podcast, and we are back. It's 2021. It's time for a brand new football season, and we will be here each and every week bringing you film breakdowns of the Florida Gators. We'll start by taking a look at Florida's defense versus FAU's offense. And as always, if you like the content, subscribe to this channel, check us out on social media, drop us a dono on Patreon where you can support our efforts, and check out the podcast each and every Monday where we bring you in-depth analysis on the Florida Gators. We'll start with a second and eight for FAU. Avery Helm playing corner in place of Jaden Hill, who unfortunately is lost for the season. We spent a lot of time last season chronicling Jaden Hill. Uh, nice job there at corner from him. Avery Helm, redshirt freshman here. Inexperienced, really getting his first true experience in the game. We're going to wind up playing a cover two. So two high safeties here, one and two. What you're looking for for Helm is he can be aggressive with anything underneath here. He has to make sure he watches the release of receiver number two to see if he's going to run a corner route, in which case he may have to split that difference. But anytime he sees an in-breaking route or a hitch in here or something over in this area, he is free to take this aggressively. He's going to backpedal a couple of steps. Here's your hitch right here. And then here's another just a little two-yard hitch. Simple pitch and catch. Comes downhill, takes a bad angle. Doesn't even wind up touching him for a nine yard gain. So if you're looking at film this week for Avery, Avery, if you're watching, obviously when you're in the cover two, you can sink a little bit here, but you don't need to sink too much. Again, in reality, if we take a look on the other side of what's happening with Elam, who's doing a better job, you're in zone, you can open up some, but you wanna let this play develop a little bit more. We talked a lot last year about the appropriate spacing in between your routes and what you're seeing. If you see an immediate intern here from receiver number two, you can be much more aggressive here on receiver number one because you have a safety over the top. Playing good defense, obviously, is really, really critical, and that all comes down to good communication, understanding who's behind you and when you're able to be aggressive so that you can, of course, make a tackle. Of course, we're picking on Avery here, but in reality, this is just true of anyone that's out there. If you want this play to be a two-yard gain versus an eight-yard gain, as that ball's getting to him, you'd like to see Avery be right about here so too much back pedal not enough downhill break not understanding of course you have help here with a safety slightly off the screen it's now first and 10 for fau we are going to get a little video error on this play but what we're going to highlight here is cox we talked about cox last year early in the season he had a tendency to overrun his lane and not hold the edge you need to be holding the edge as the edge rusher he's going to do it here early in this game he's excited he wants a big play there he is he eats this too hard allows the running back to turn the corner on him and our video is going to get stuck right there for a nice gain if you're the edge rusher obviously for florida's defense needs to hold the edge right here and allow this hold, hold, hold. Again, he has help here to the inside. Hold the edge, set the edge. He can't get outside of you. That's the rule. That would limit this play to basically nothing. Said he's over aggressive. Then we also take an inside route here from Avery Helm and makes the same mistake. So Cox goes too far inside. Now Helm is going too far inside. And as opposed to Helm being here on the outside, turning him back to the middle, he's going to allow him to escape to the edge typical early season things you might see on a defense of course these things have been reoccurring at times for florida's defense uh, but right away fau is able to take a play that really should have been negative yards florida's in the perfect defensive call there and turn it into a first down play fau now getting into the game liking what they see on this left side they've been staying away from elam up top and instead been coming down here towards helm knowing he's a redshirt freshman that's typical obviously in pregame scouting you're going to try to take advantage of the more inexperienced guy they're going to motion their running back here and he is going to blow right by helms in the bottom of the screen and this should be a touchdown unfortunately ball's well overthrown that is what nikosi perry struggles with of FAU he struggles to be accurate it's what he struggled with at Miami he's struggling here take a look ball's just overthrown uh, Helms is beat Helms also is playing off coverage so he has plenty of buffer here plenty of buffer here between him and the receiver he immediately is going but he's just waiting too long to open up gets beat escapes a touchdown there nice call from FAU unfortunately not a touchdown for them fortunately for Florida an incomplete pass. Something that really plagued Florida last year and has plagued Grantham defenses in general is just far too soft 
of playing, especially in these situations. It's third down and four. You're going up against FAU, not a team that's passed well at all. Again, one of the worst offenses in college football, especially passing last year. And we're going to have plenty of places for Perry to go. He can go right here. Take a look at the coverage here. I'm not really sure what Chavez is defending against. If this is the first down line, you're just giving it to him. That simple. Also, not sure what's happening here. This is nice. Let's rewind this here so you can see. We're appropriately going to take away the running back out of the backfield. So that's gone. Then you have Trey Dean and Elam here pattern matching these routes as they come off the line. Dean is looking to see what route is going to be run here. But on the first receiver, he has inside responsibility. And then we see they really just flood that. So we've talked a lot on the podcast about if you do pattern matches a defense, one of the ways the offense will defeat it is by running two common routes, which make you take a longer time to declare what's happening. So Trey Dean waits to see if this route's going to break in or not. By the time he decides that he's going to pass this off to Elam, he then has this hitch wide open. This is a good call from FAU and an easy completion for the first down. If you look again from the start, and we've also talked a lot about this, the easiest way to disrupt this, and I wish Florida would do it, is simply to put pressure right here. Let's get a jam on the top of this stack set. Let's disrupt the release and timing. Any sort of jam there makes it much easier for trading to come a little closer and read the release of those receivers. But if you give them a free release, it's difficult. And then Perry takes his first read for the first down conversion. Third and 19 for FAU. We talked all offseason about Florida's defensive line and just how good we thought they would be. Here you're getting really a first look at them against FAU under duress. They're going to try to run a screen. Uh, Florida's there entirely too fast. There's Moon coming in right away. Here's Valentino, who obviously had an excellent game. We talked about him at length. You'll see him on this film study, talked about on the podcast quite a bit. He really had a nice game, the transfer from Penn State. And this throw is going to wind up just getting chucked into the dirt. But nice pressure from Florida. Relentless pursuit right there. Moon misses first. Play gets cleaned up. They're fortunate to get away with an incomplete pass. But Florida was living in the backfield of FAU. A very good sign. The pressure that Florida was able to generate uh, with their front four. Zach Carter, who figures to be a prominent player for Florida on defense this year, won a lot of one-on-one -on -one battles in this particular game. He's going to win the speed rush here to the outside on second and five. Easily strip sack there on Perry. Ball picked up by Dexter. Turnover Florida. Really nice individual play by Carter. One more time. They're faking the handoff. Taken out nicely. Also good work here by Trey Dean. We had mentioned last year that if Florida would make more contact within the five-yard boundary, take that Dean there, that would be helpful. A lot of times we just allow teams to have free releases, so good to see Trey Dean coming downhill and getting involved within that five-yard boundary where you can, of course, bump and run like that. Not the prettiest technique, but you still see it there. But meanwhile, the most important thing is getting home to the quarterback there by Zach Carter. Very, very nice play. Fumble, turnover for Florida. Another third down for Florida, third down and nine early in the second quarter. Florida has struggled with zone. Elam has particularly has struggled with zone, which really doesn't make a lot of sense for a player of his caliber. But here we have two versus three. We're going to have an over-the-top safety. We're going to have an underneath defender here taking the inside and Elam taking the outside. Now I want you to watch what happens as this play develops. You're going to get pressure again from Carter. Here's your pressure. Perry's got to step up. And as Perry steps up, he's going to find a wide-open receiver here on the sideline now here's something that has really plagued florida consistently again we have a safety who's going to shade over the top here we go at this point in time florida needs to be locking on to these routes and you can see elam at the bottom of your screen he needs to lock on to this route which you can't see when he goes off screen is elam just keeps on backpedaling out of here but there is no other vertical route take a look no vertical route elam has safety over the top he needs to be locking on once it gets to this area. There's no other threat to him. We're good here. He must lock up on this route. He must pattern match to it. There's no reason for him to just continue to backpedal and then give up this easy comeback route, especially because these are the kind of throws a team like FAU wants, but also because you have a 3v2 with a safety over the top that we are now essentially wasting as we're playing two players behind 
this receiver who's going to wind up converting this easy third down and nine. Of course, it is still troubling to see Florida's defense executing third downs like this. Uh, no real good reason to play zone this way. Uh, and obviously not something that you want to see one of your most veteran and potentially a top 15 pick in the NFL draft doing in a zone coverage where he really only has one person to lock on to. So once that route's declared, you got to lock on to him and play defense to deny conversions like these. This is just too easy. Third down and four, we've seen this kind of defense from Florida in the past with some weird assignments they're going to ask them to do. First, we're going to start by having a linebacker lined up here who then is supposed to come all the way over here and cover this in-breaking route, except it's not an in-breaking route. It's a hitch route. So there's no chance he's getting there. I'm going to rewind this first. Take a look one more time. He is going to be responsible for the slot receiver. The slot receiver runs any kind of in-breaking route, that's just fine. If he runs a hitch route, which he's going to do, no chance that you're going to get a stop on this. Take a look here. Here's your hitch route. Again, he's responsible for anything coming interiorly. Not going to get there in time. That could be completed. He could take this one if he wants for a first down. Over the top, they're going to run this corner route here. They're acting a smash concept on Elam. Now here's Elam here. Elam is stuck in between the corner and the hitch. He's not gonna be able to defend the hitch either. And now he's also not gonna be able to come downhill in time and make a stop there. So a third and four becomes such an easy throw. Again, take a look here. This is just a two yard pass. This is what the quarterback wants to make. And he has either him or him. And he really also potentially has him, uh, depending on who he's looking at and where Elam's at. But Elam is splitting the difference. Take a look one more time. He's got a cover two over the top here, too high. He's going to sit here, and he's waiting for this corner route. The odds of Perry throwing the corner route are pretty small, far more likely to throw this one. But more importantly, it's just it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to start your backer here and then have him come all the way over here. Again, so you can get a late blitz here from a middle linebacker that doesn't even get close to getting home. You could just play sound football. If you want to bring pressure, put him here bring the pressure, have him drop back, or more importantly, have him bring the pressure, have him stay here against the flat, and then you're much more integral. Lots of ways to defend this. I don't like how Florida tends to want to peel their linebackers. To me, it's overly cute. It doesn't work very well. Modern teams are built to run these flood plays, which is what, of course, you're seeing here. It's just a simple flood concept, all working the edge, knowing that if you do anything cute, with your interior linebackers in here. They're going to have a two-on-one somewhere. In this case, they two-on-one Elam, and they convert. Now, Willie Taggart is the coach of FAU, and on this all-important fourth and four, down 14-0 in the second quarter where it's still a ball game, he's going to put two receivers out here, a quarterback and a running back. That's four players. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. There is no 11th player. There's no one down here. There's no one hidden over here. That 11th player is somewhere over there. So Florida gets the advantage of playing 11 v 10, always a good thing. Florida's still going to be hesitant to load the box here, as Florida will do. We're going to start off a little hesitant here. We're off line of scrimmage, and we're going to creep up. And then eventually we will get eight guys in the box there, plus the ninth at the very end. Uh, largely, though, not a tough stop when you get to go 11 v 10. Thank you, Willie Taggart. After a turnover in the red zone, FAU is second and eight from inside the five. Florida is going to have Bernie flowing out here and then Diabate. Now, this, this will happen at times, especially with Diabate. He loves to attack the quarterback, but you can't have both of them committing. You only need one. Again, someone needs to lock on here in coverage. We break down in discipline. Perry then has an easy throw, and we have two players that are stuck halfway in between. Again, simple, simple save here. Take a look at the coverage elsewhere. Nice coverage down here, that's dead. Double covered over here, that's dead. You have to make sure that if you're Diabate, your responsibility is to lock up on this. And instead, our eyes are in the backfield. We're imagining we're a free runner, which we are not. That is Bernie's job. That allows for this easy completion and first down on second and eight. Third and two, Florida's going to run a defense here that I like. We are going to get a part of it wrong, but I like it. Third and two, we got some press man up top, single high. I'd like to see us down here putting pressure early on on the top of that bunch set here with a motion. We're not going to give me that wish, but 
Nice contact here by Hopper. Everything right now looks pretty good. We're in man here. Looks like we're in man here, except, uh-oh. We get the sack, which is great, but Hopper is uh, coming over here. So this would have been wide open had there actually been time. But thankfully, Florida's defensive line, of course, is excellent. And they're going to take this time away. But against a better opponent that might not allow almost every single rusher to push their lineman way back into the backfield, this could be trouble. Of course, something you want to clean up on film here. In fact, they do talk about this. McMillan and Hopper talk about this after the play as to who is supposed to be covering two. But this is a bust in this play here. Is a bust in this play here. Uh, but I like it. I like the man defense. Take a look at these throw windows. Not a good throw window there. Here's Elam up top. Gets beat actually in the slant and go a little bit, right? Overreaching here with two arms. Talked about this last year. I don't like reaching with two arms there from Elam. Prefer one, but either way, much smaller windows to throw the football to. So I'll take that. I'll take that. Something to clean up, something to work on. I like the aggression there on third and two. Third down and three for FAU. We saw several times last year that Florida was unable to get the play in and get lined up. Although you couldn't tell in the broadcast, that's exactly what's happening right now. Florida does not know what the play is. It's third down and three. They are not lined up even remotely at all. There's a good look at it. Not lined up even remotely at all. We are not set and we are not ready. They had just finished discussing. Of course, on the All-22, you can see this, but they had just finished discussing amongst themselves what the play was. The ball is snapped, and this is going to lead to an easy conversion for FAU. This only happened one time. However, it did happen. We love to see it happen zero times. Second down and 15 here. One thing about doing these film breakdowns is they obviously do not know all the play calls. You can make some guesses as to what's happening, but typically if a receiver is lined up inside the numbers, and the numbers are down here, you can't see them, and you're going to have a safety over top, which we're going to see, you're going to want the defender to wind up taking outside leverage to push the receiver inside. Why do you want that? Because you want that receiver to be pushed to your safety. If you are outside the numbers, then you're going to flip that and you're going to line up inside leverage because the sideline is a help defender for you and you'll funnel them to the outside. So on this side, we're going to see Avery Helm here on the release allow himself to get beat to the outside in which case the safety can't help him. Now he has nice coverage. He's got his hand on the receiver there. He's covering the inside, but he actually should be on this side of him. Avery Elm should be on this side of him, pushing him into the safety. You can imagine a world where a better quarterback and a better receiver are gonna have all of this area outside the numbers to work. And again, we would just waste the play of the safety. However, up top, let's give Elam some shine here. Take a look at Kair. He's outside the numbers. Here's the numbers. He's outside. Inside leverage, which is exactly what you want. If he does his job well, he wants to force this receiver out into the boundary. Let's see what he does here. Nice footwork. Cross body jam. Great work here. Cross body jam. He's got the left arm reaching across. If he tries to run a slant route, that way he'll still stay on top. Excellent cross body jam. Starts to run with the route and take a look at where he rides his receiver to. He is out of bounds. That is perfect technique by Elam. Excellent, excellent work. No way the ball is going over there. So again, film breakdown, it's always about the little things. You want to make sure your defense is doing things correctly. Great job here. Highlight this. Put this in the film room. Let Elam know how great this was. And work with Avery here on making sure you understand what leverage you're supposed to have and how your safety can help you. Fourth and six for FAU. This is a really nice thing about having so many defenders in the line of scrimmage who can rush the passer and also play something else. One of the advantages of playing a true three, four is you can make it very, very confusing who is rushing, who is not rushing. And Florida's only going to wind up rushing three on this play. Take a look at it. They only wind up rushing three, but due to the alignment and confusion, Cox actually comes free, completely untouched. Blown assignment there from FAU. Florida handles the bunch routes in here in the underneath quite well. They've got good contact here. Take a look. We've got this taken care of. We've got this taken care of. You've got a flat underneath here uh, really as the only option. That's nice defense by Florida. Good job there by Ventrell. Nice play by the Gators. Uh, really, though, nice design here. Nice design here from Grantham. A nice work by the D-line to be able to execute this. Just creates enough confusion here. Uh, that FAU does not get it right, and it leads to a big stop on a, on fourth and six here with 15 seconds left in the second quarter. So still a game at FAU been able to convert there and get a field goal or a touchdown. 
Third down and four for FAU. Of course, we like to look at the third downs. They're what Florida has struggled the most with historically, hence a lot of look at them on this film breakdown against an overmatched opponent. Florida's going to work a cover two here. Safety over the top. Elam's job is to stay underneath this route. Stay underneath this route and cover two and make sure that if he wants to throw it in this window, it's got to be small. And there it is. Take a look. Elam's underneath it in cover two. It's small window. Trey Dean comes over and makes a play. So nice work by Trey Dean, recognizing what his role is, what his responsibility is, where he's supposed to cover. And here we are. Now, why am I showing you this? Well, this is what's interesting about playing some of the defense Florida plays. A lot of modern teams would elect instead to pattern match this. So you would tell Elam, if there's only one receiver and no eligible that comes out into your area, so hike, take a look, no one there, linebacker is going to account for the running back, you just lock onto this. Because there's really no reason for you to play zone here at all. In fact, by playing zone, we are actually giving FAU a throw window. So we're just going to lock this up. Yes, you have safety up over the top, but we're going to lock this up. You have middle help here. If you trust your defensive line, you're going to assume this play is over and you're just going to pattern match this and lock on. Older school zones or static zones in football are going to say, you just cover your static zone. And if no one goes there, then you're chilling for that play. You just cover your zone. Um, and that way, theoretically, if someone were going to run like a long dig over, of course, you could get into that. But again, the way the modern game is working, it's much more likely they're going to attack these static zone concepts. This is not a great play here by FAU. They could have run something different. But regardless, with him bubbling underneath, he does make that throw window tighter. But I would offer the commentary of saying if no other receiver is going to be in your area and you only have a one receiver release, pattern match that with safety over the top is helping. I think that's the way to go. That then gives your safety the ability actually to flex down here should he need that because he knows if there's only one receiver he's going to lock on especially if he goes vertical. Anyway, Florida gets a stop there. Nice work by Trey Dean coming over the top. It's first and 10 for FAU. They typically are passing on these downs. I mean, running on these, on these downs, but they are looking to pass here, showing four receivers. Here is Trevez Johnson, a guy who Florida has been trying out at the star position or the nickel or the slot corner, depending on what you call him. Uh, from the film he's put out there, I don't think this is a natural position for him in general. Here he's playing zone. He's going to try to make sure that he makes some contact here, which I like this within five yards. Get your hand on and reroute. However, at this point in time, Trevez does have Elam dropping behind him, as well as a safety here. Take a look one more time. He's got two droppers. He can be aggressive. His role is to play curl, curl to flat, right, to the boundary. Curl to flat. So he can take this curl off that comes in front of him. But once he passes this off, he really needs to be on his horse getting out to this route. Have your head up. Take a look at what routes they're running. Instead, he kind of obligatorily gives him the obligatory shuff, shuffle, sorry, shove. And then he winds up backpedaling and putting himself guarding no one. This is an easy outside pass, what they want. And he's going to compound his problems by coming in way too hard. And he doesn't even touch him. So first down and 10 becomes a gain of 12. If this is done correctly, done correctly, Trevez is going to reroute here, which is fine, and hands-on pass off, and now do your job and get here, get here to the flat. Instead, he comes in, misses the tackle, easy first down. So is that defensive play call bad? No, that call's perfectly fine, but you have to execute correctly. Florida, again, struggling in zone to execute correctly. The details of how to run zone coverage well just does not seem to be something this team does well. And it's one of the reasons why teams have a high degree of success against Florida throwing relatively simple passes. Third down and 10 for FAU. Another nice call here from Florida on third and 10. I like this call. Again, we're going to wind up playing press man on the corners. We're going to also play off man here from the slots. Then we're going to drop Torrance back to be a single high safety, leaving our two linebackers free to play underneath on any routes that come as crossers to help or, of course, as spies on the quarterback. Early on, perfect technique here from Elam because he has a single high safety and he's not outside the numbers. He wants to force this route inside to his help. He immediately wins. They actually wind up running a corner, a comeback route on him in which he's sitting underneath it. That is perfect coverage. On the other side, we again have Helms allowing an outside release. Although Florida could be encouraging this, it's far more likely he should be allowing an inside release here because he has, again, two linebackers helping him in the middle and a single high safety. Uh, can't say that definitively, but that's most likely the case. That's the textbook case. 
Either way, I'm showing you this play to say on third and 10, I like the fact, again, Florida as the superior team playing man defense, two underneath defenders to help on any kind of crosser. And then in the case that Perry wants to run, which he does, you have two linebackers waiting for him. Nice defensive call on third down and 10 from Florida. First and 10 after an Emory Jones interception for Florida's defense. You're coming out in the quick change. 21-0, still technically a game here. I like this call from Florida as well. Of course, I love that Zach Carter is going to get in here and just dominate for the sack. But one thing we chronicled last year quite extensively was that Florida struggled to get hands on receivers within the five-yard mark. And in fact, here we can see much better job here. That's what you want. You have to get physical, get your hands on them, take away the obvious throws. I thought Florida improved in this game in that metric. I think a lot of that has to do with obviously both the additions of two new coaches, the safety and secondary coach. I think you're seeing an improvement there when it comes to coaching and technique. It was much cleaner from Florida. We're highlighting both the good, bad, and the indifferent in game one. But all in all, there were several things that are occurring in this game that had not occurred through most of last year. Uh, and these are these are good things. It's a good thing to see Florida being a little bit more physical, a little bit more contact on these receivers, on these plays, playing a little bit more man on third down. I think that led to a lot of Florida's middle game success in this game. Florida, again, struggled mightily, mightily on third down. They especially struggled when they wanted to drop three last year against good teams. I'm sorry, when they wanted to rush three and drop eight. Uh, inexplicably, Florida's defense just would allow teams to get open. Down here, we have a bunch set of three. My preferred way of defending this is to jam up this release here of the top receiver. And then typically, you're going to have a receiver that takes the first one outside, the first one inside with help over the top. Florida's going to like to play this with a 2v3. Take a look, 2v3. Here's Trevez. Trevez does engage him here. I prefer an early engage. I like that engage. It's fine on third and 17. But the rest of this is going to go a little bit off the rails. Our action here is we're going to open up in the middle of the field with our linebackers, and we're going to get some depth on third and 17. We're going to have a spy here for any sort of underneath route or in case Perry goes through. I'm fine with that. But at this point in time, this is going to be a conversion with a better quarterback. He's wide open. He's got a big throw window. And as you can see, we have three players guarding effectively no one. So if you're going to drop eight, and a team is going to send three receivers out, which is what happened right here. Three receivers out, max protect. You cannot allow them to find empty zones this large. But a lot of times Florida is just sort of unsure of where they're supposed to be going in their zone defense. And we can see a deep drop here. We have two safeties high that you can't see. They'll come into the screen. There you go. So we have three players deeper than the deepest receiver. Here's your mid-range receiver, which killed Florida. And essentially, he is wide open here with this nice, huge gap. Two wasted players, three players behind. You can drop eight. Dropping eight's fine. But there's no way that you should allow within two seconds of a normal play time a, a regular route like this little skinny post to be open. That just can't happen. It's been happening too much for Florida. That needs to get cleaned up. First and 10. We're now in the fourth quarter. Hard to know whose fault some of these things are. I won't even make a guess as to what's happening now. You'll see Elam down low on the bottom of your screen. He's locked up in man. Again, he's going to force an inside release. That is perfect. Check, check. We have Avery up top. He's going to pass off and then clear. So a pass off on the interior route. He gets his hands on him, checks him off. And then we're not going to have anybody pick off the pass off. So here's the pass off. Here's Bernie. Bernie's not going to flow with him. We still have Elam and man. You can't see Perkins. Perkins is off your screen until right now. He was also chasing his man. And then, of course, coming all the way down the field, you have Bernie. So I can't say who's doing what there. It's either a combo zone, and Helms was right that he should be passing that off, or what I think is probably more likely in this situation is that you're playing a robber here and that Helms was supposed to stay with his man. That's the more likely situation. He's a robber. That's why he's not looking. He's not even swiveling his head around to see if there's a route coming at him. He's just a robber. He's going to watch the quarterback's eyes and play free. And then Helms, I think, is supposed to stay locked up here. It's the best guess based on what everyone else is doing in the All-22. Can't totally be sure. Either way, blown coverage leads to a huge play. In fact, the biggest passing play for FAU. That's going to happen especially this part of the season, uh, what you want to see is you want to see that get 
cleaned up if it happens to a redshirt freshman player like Helms, who obviously was not slated to be a starter. That also makes sense. Uh, Helms had a tough day. Hopefully, he'll have a good week of practice this week to clean up what he sees on film. Third and nine from FAU. Getting close to garbage time at 28 nothing, or fully in garbage time. A guy I actually really liked, Jadarius Perkins, who we didn't highlight too many of his plays. We're going to see some here as we get closer. Does not play this one perfectly, but I like him a lot. In this case, short drag, third and nine, short drag. You can play a zone. You can play the line here. This is what it's got to look like. Take a look here. This is good. That's what you want to see. That route's not there. This drag, you can allow this to be caught. But he needs to be here. If he's level with Ventrell Miller, he's here. He makes this tackle. Instead, he's too far back. And then he comes in too soft, playing a contain role here. Got to make a tackle downhill, get him stopped short, and allows him to convert the first down. Now, I think Perkins had a nice game. But illustrate if you're on third down and nine, quarterback who doesn't want to throw well, you're getting pressure all day long as you're going to get it again right here. Immediate pressure, Florida's harassing Perry all day long. Perkins has got to recognize where he's at on the field and hold this line on that drag. Come underneath, rally, and make a tackle. Either way, close to a good play. One wrong guy out of position. That's what makes football great. You got to have all 11 guys doing the right thing. Here's a look at Jason Marshall, number three, who based upon this game film, I think should earn the starting role over Helms for next game or at least get equal playing time to further test. He's going to be running a cover two at the top of your screen here. Cover two with a safety over the top. And they're going to run a smash concept on him. Corner and a hitch. Again, the role of the corner in this situation is to stay equidistant between the two. You want to make sure that you're making this corner throw extremely hard, that your safety can come over the top against it, and that if they throw the little five-yard hitch at second and 10, you'll rally down and make that tackle, making it third down and five. So the conflict defender is Marshall. He early declares. Take a look. This is nice by Perry. Perry's reading this. Perry's going to look here, gets him to commit, makes a throw. It's a nice play by a guy who tends to struggle with his passing accuracy. Nice play here. You can see this window is too big, too big. If he carries this just a little bit longer, it gives the safety time to come over. Uh, instead, they complete this nice corner route right on time. Nice quarterbacking. Good chance for Marshall again to clean this up. You can't rally down until the ball is thrown. Your job is to really prevent what you can't see happening off your screen, which is this corner over your head uh, for as long as possible. Third and 21, right near the end of the game, and the last play of our film breakdown on defense. Here is Perkins, who we talked about, who I think had a nice game. I'd actually like to see Florida use him as the starting star or nickelback or slot corner. Uh, Florida tends to want to use that star more as a run stopper, but I like what I see out of him. I think he's aggressive and solid. Let me clear the screen here for you. They're going to run a post route. Perkins is going to pop into your screen right here. Perkins playing off technique. As soon as the post broke in, he collapsed on it, rode with him, able to then high point this ball. There it is, and get a nice deflection. I really, really like what I saw from him. I love to see him get some more playing time. I think he's got a good feel for football. He covers very, very well. He's aggressive. Uh, I like I like what I see. Also a nice play there from Don McMillan, who got some play here late. Florida's young safety. That's a good defensive play. That's what you want to see if you're playing off man. Nice engagement there from Florida. Good defense on that particular play. That's going to do it for this wrap-up. There's not a lot of big conclusions you can draw from a first game in football with Florida versus FAU. Tried to highlight some of the smaller things, some of the things we saw from last year. Obviously, as the season goes on, we'll figure out what this defense is really made of. Uh, but all in all, there's a lot of fresh faces and a lot of new players that I think can really contribute to this defense. If we can clean up things on defense with regards to scheme and strategy, I think this defense could have some success. It's something to keep an eye on. Of course, each and every week, I will be bringing you these breakdowns so that you can take a look for yourself and see what Florida's doing on a week-by-week -week basis. As always, thanks for watching. I certainly appreciate it and look forward to being with you next time.